Greetings everyone, my name is Muhammad Fakhruddin Yangchen. I know that can be quite a challenge to remember, so I usually go by Muhammad or Yang. I am a designer, design researcher, and educator from The Ohio State University. Today we are going to explore VR in the field of design and we'll immerse ourselves in a new studio environment. VR of course referring to virtual reality. If you have found yourself at this presentation, chances are you are a fellow design educator or a designer who is really interested in the medium of virtual reality. There has been a recent growing interest in VR and teaching due to the current COVID-19 pandemic. If you do not belong to any of these categories, then worry not, as the content here can extend beyond the boundaries of just design. VR is not something new and has existed in various forms since the mid-1900s. But what we are seeing today is the boom of consumer-ready virtual reality, which compared to its predecessors are more affordable, comfortable, easy to set up, and easy to use. What this presents us as designers and design educators is an opportunity to integrate this medium within our own process, being it work, research, or teaching. Though this area of research of VR within design has existed in smaller pockets over the last two decades, it is because of this current boom that a new wave of research is emerging. My own research in this area for the last three years has presented me with the opportunity to speak and have discussions with many individuals globally from the field of design. The conversations around the area of utilizing VR for teaching has only increased, especially most recently during the pandemic lockdowns. These conversations reveal a clear pattern of three main types of questions usually being asked. Why should I use VR? What can I do with VR? Who and what do I need to use VR? The next part of my presentation will be sectioned in response to these three questions. And as we say in VR, you can teleport to these sections if you feel the need to get there quickly. Here you would find their respective timestamps. The first question, why should design educators use VR? We can answer this question with a quote. Good design is about turning dreams into reality. But specifically, through the lens of VR, the answer to the question of why is more like this. VR makes clear those dreams and materializes good design into a reality. Simply put, the utilization of VR within the design process gives birth to a new set of affordances that enhances and enriches design work. The challenge of design education lies in the complex concepts and processes that cannot be delivered through just the conventional lecture. From the explicit to the implicit and tacit knowledge, design educators across the different branches have differed, but all have settled for the studio as the best mode of knowledge transfer. Here you see a short clip of the new design studio in VR, but before we get there, we need to first understand the landscape surrounding it. In numerous studies and explorations, Forms of VR when used as a tool for design has been able to align itself with design studio and constructivist pedagogy, such as enabling clear modes of dialogue and collaboration. It facilitates learning by hands-on doing. It enables the practice of skills being taught. And engagement in VR design environments encourage critical thinking, innovation, and experimentation. In my research, I have discovered three routes in how design educators are using VR for teaching. Looking at these routes can give other design educators a better perspective in answering why they should use VR for their own curriculum. The first route is ADAPT. Here, design educators mostly utilize VR as a substitute mode for communication, rather than a tool for design. Educators here wanted to continue their normal way of teaching, but needed a space or environment that would be closer to the studio allowing for better engagement compared to video conferencing setups. An example of this is a VR meeting room where an instructor shares a video or live demonstration of 2D perspective sketching techniques on a digital canvas. Instructors and students use the VR space for critiques and discussion, sharing their own work and images. The second route is Enhance. In this group, design educators utilize VR as a tool, integrating it into the design process. This usually happens when design educators discover something beneficial in VR that has enhanced their own work and teaching process. An example of this is an instructor utilizing the novelty of 3D sketching in an immersive space to convey design concepts and principles. 
The third and final group is shift, where VR becomes the design goal. Newer branches of design such as inborn experience design, which is UI UX design for VR, are within this group. Design educators in this group are usually more forward-thinking and understand the potential in which VR is heading. Curricula from this group are unique and extend across multiple branches of traditional design. For example, the design of VR experiences blurs the lines between architecture, interior design, product design, and interaction design. Courses in this area are primarily immersed in virtual environments. The approach by the shift route can be summed up as designing with VR for VR and extends into the exploration of speculative possibilities VR can offer. Just think about what a VR studio mimicking zero gravity can do for the design of a space station. It should be noted that an ideal design studio in VR should encompass possibilities of all three routes. A final point of consideration to why VR is the consumer boom which was covered at the beginning of this presentation. VR headsets today are more affordable and have a smaller footprint for setup, meaning they are more portable and take up less space. You can see a size comparison of the more common KVR system set up on the right. These factors make current VR headsets more viable for academic implementation. This brings us to the second question. What can we design educators do with VR? The answer to this question can be a long exhaustive list, so instead, an analysis through the frame of design pedagogy was conducted on the current available VR apps. These revealed three broad categories of the types of activities that match designerly requirements. The first is visualizing, the second is making, and the third is connecting. Ideally, a good application most suited for a VR design studio should overlap in all three categories. However, as most applications were not intended solely for design education, they could be sufficient in one area but lacked in other aspects. Applications in the visualizing category presented immersive new ways of viewing models and spaces. VR allowed designers to walk into full-scale environments of their own creation. This gave them the needed perspectives in developing better understanding and informing the decision-making process. One downside of the applications here is the limited ability to make real-time edits while in VR. To be a useful tool for the design studio meant that besides importing the different types of media, users should have full control to edit and manipulate or create. The applications in this group are best suited for individual design evaluation and asynchronous work as they lack in collaborative features. In making, users are able to create from scratch edit and add to existing environments or models. This is the category that is by far the most designerly amongst all three. Tools within the applications are designed to facilitate creative work, such as building models from surfaces to 3D sketching. As with the visualizing category, applications here lack in synchronous features for real-time collaboration and critique, which are important for studio work. It should be noted that updates in some apps have started incorporating networking features, indicating a growing demand in collaborative and educational work. One other issue with some applications in this category is the focus on tools that may benefit only a particular branch of design. This may not be ideal in some studios where there is a collaboration across other design disciplines. The third group connecting is one that is very essential for a studio environment, being able to have dialogue, collaborate and present work. Though there are applications in the first two categories that overlap here, most of their networking features are basic and limited. Social VR applications on the other hand have more in-depth network controls for admin and security, which are important in an educational setup. Educators in non-design fields have tried using such applications for teaching which is similar to the ADAPT route covered in the previous section, where VR was used as an alternative meeting environment. Unfortunately, most of the social VR applications lack an important design facilitating tools that are present in the other two categories. Other findings from the analysis of existing VR apps included interfacing and compatibility issues with file formats. This means that Designers have to go through a longer process just to get their existing models and other media files to work with certain applications. 
there are many applications that are still not available to the public or are proprietary. The lack of an all-round app to meet the ideal requirements for a VR design studio can lead to the discouragement of adoption. Another way of approaching the question of what can design educators do with VR is by flipping it around and instead asking what design educators need VR to do for them. And for this, we shift the focus from currently available apps to the hybrid customizable option of the new VR design studio. The new VR design studio was developed from the combined experience I had as a design educator and a developer of VR experiences. It takes into account three major considerations. The first is design and constructivist pedagogy. The second is usability of environments and tools. And the third is academic demands and implementation. It has gone through multiple iterations and continues to be developed as a platform for design work, research, teaching and learning. Here you see a recorded video taken within the VR environment itself. The multiple users present here, including myself, were fully immersed in the VR studio, but were connected remotely from their own homes. What you see here is the testing of a new 3D drawing tool that was created by another designer within the same studio platform. What differentiates the VR design studio compared to other VR applications is in the everything can be design approach. This includes elements of collaboration, avatars, environments, and even the way a user interacts within the studio space. This is achieved through its core structure, also known as the collaborative VR design sandbox. The approach of being able to design everything or having it being highly customizable is the key strength of a sandbox. This is important, especially in design pedagogy, as the content and teaching styles, even within the studio, can be very diverse. Educators need the option to be able to make tweaks that best suits their own curriculum. This also leaves the format of the studio open for iterations and cross-design discipline work. Another point to note is that the flexibility of the sandbox allows either of the three routes, adapt, enhance, and shift, to be implemented in this setting. The VR Design Studio gives us a whole new perspective on how this medium can enhance design. Here I will share some empirical findings from explorations in work, research, and teaching. In this particular project, students had to design a showcase for a design exhibition. The challenge was that the exhibition space was occupied by other exhibits. This limited the students' access to the space. Some design decisions also required multiple visits to the location over a period of several months, which is not ideal. The VR Design Studio was explored for prototyping this showcase. Simple tools were chosen so that students could quickly get a grasp of how to import content and move things around the environment. This allowed students and stakeholders from the exhibition team to test out concepts and be immersed in the actual full-scale exhibition space. This not only reduced the obstacles, but facilitated better insights for the decision-making process. You can see from the actual photos taken from the exhibition that they are almost identical to your VR prototype. The VR Design Studio has also been implemented in design research. In this particular example, the collaborative features were utilized in the area of participatory design research. In this research session, Participants made up of ex-patients and medical personnel were engaged to provide insights from their own valuable experiences to design an ICU room that could potentially reduce delirium and sleep deprivation. The students faced two challenges. The first was figuring out a tool that could best facilitate the design activity, and the second was the pandemic lockdown that happened. The collaborative VR design sandbox allowed the students to create their own basic ICU room from scratch, and prepare toolkits by integrating multiple forms of media, such as models, images, and even spatial audio clips. The participants were able to lead the design activity in the VR Design Studio by connecting via a video called Share Screen. Each participant could dictate which camera angles they preferred and instructed the students in their design choices throughout the session. 
The results from the session showed the enhanced potentials of research when utilizing the VR Design Studio, with benefits for participants and researchers. A similar research session like this in the physical world would have taken up much more time and resources. After the session, the students were able to revisit these VR environments and even had 360 image captures that aided them in providing a more unique immersive perspective for analysis. What was particularly discovered in this use case was the importance of having the ability to create and manipulate in real time, such as scaling, changing of colors, and playing with lighting. In the area of teaching, many of the examples presented already showcase what can be done in the VR Design Studio. We will look at two more use cases of making in the VR Design Studio, which is an important activity for experiential learning. Making also parallels constructivist pedagogy in education, where it is important that students build their own understanding through such valuable learned experiences. The examples here showcase making in the form of quick prototyping of a car console on the left and an ideal learning space on the right. Studies have found that such making activities shift the focus from the artifact to the process, which is equally as important in design pedagogy. What should be noted here is that these environments are saved in the cloud and can be revisited with industry experts, guests, or other groups of students, and this is no longer limited by geography or time zones. The VR Design Studio meets the needs but also adds value to the ideal studio environment through the affordances presented by VR. This allows it to be positioned in the very spot that fulfills the needs of design pedagogy. When most design educators have discovered why and what they can do with VR, they are usually met by the last and most important question, who and what do I need to use VR in my own curriculum? Most of the time, the concerns here relate primarily to funding and logistics, such as hiring the right support staff and equipment acquisition. Well, I am not here to answer funding questions, but such initiatives or programs on campus usually first begin with a small pilot project and expand from there if successful. The interest of VR in academia is growing beyond just design, and chances are institutions are fully aware of this trend. What is most interesting is that no matter which field of academia it originates from, designers will still have to be part of the VR team. This means that as far as who is needed, Designers are the best people for such a development. Branches in design such as UI UX and interaction design already possess the foundational knowledge to build such applications. The concept of the VR collaborative sandbox is designed to be universal and abide by the 80-20 rule, which means that knowing 20% of how things work will enable the design educator to confidently set up their own VR design studio. For equipment acquisition, we know that many VR devices today are becoming relatively cheaper and more affordable for institutions. Furthermore, such applications can be used for multiple courses and programs. Now that you have a better insight into VR and its relation to design, you can start thinking about your own use for it. My advice is to talk to people in the industry or reach out to individuals in academia that are within this area, such as myself. Also, get a headset and immerse yourself in this new environment. VR in a presentation is not even close to what you will actually experience when you put on a headset. As designers and design educators, we should always be ahead in terms of innovation and be the forerunners in the mastery of such technologies for the benefit of others. You can refer to my paper that will be published with this conference for details that were not covered in this presentation, or send me an email at my address stated here. Thank you.